If you are into electronics, you might have this lithium ion or lipo batteries salvaged from old phones or laptop batteries. This one indicated 2600 mAh and this one doesn't state anything. But we have no idea on their true capacity. So one would just buy a battery capacity test tester online. But can we just build our own battery capacity meter? Let's find out. So first, we know that these batteries are rated in milliamp hour. Basically, this came from multiplying the current and the time. The current can be in amps and the time can be in seconds, minutes or hours. So for example, you put a load on the battery and it gives 2600 milliamps for just one hour and it's totally dead. So it's a 2600 milliamp hour battery. But we have a problem, our battery will not always give that amount of current because when it's full it's 4.2 volts and will slowly drop down to 3 volts as it goes to empty. So it affects the current. What we can do now to approximate its capacity is to time it and multiply the current and time in many in many intervals. Like for 30 seconds it consumes this current and the next 30 seconds it consumes this current and next and so on. So we can compensate for the changing current but obviously it's impractical to do it manually. So now we will need an Arduino Pro Mini to do it for us. So this will be the brain of our project. So instead of using a fixed value resistor for our load, we use an N-channel MOSFET attached on a heatsink and this one a um, 5W resistor as our shunt resistor, a potentiometer so we can have a variable resistance, an LCD so we can see the reading. So now, we need to connect the first terminal of the shunt resistor to the source of our MOSFET and connect the other leg to the negative of the battery. Connect the drain of the MOSFET to the positive of the battery. Now, we connect the left pin of the potentiometer to the negative of the battery and the middle pin to the gate of our MOSFET. Next, the rightmost pin, we connect it to 5 volt supply. And basically, we're applying a variable voltage to the gate of the MOSFET so we can vary the current consumption. If we measure the voltage across the 1 ohm shunt resistor, and if we increase the current, the voltage also increases, just ohms law. But we have a little problem here. The current adjustment is not that fine, so I place a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor in series with a potentiometer. So we connect the negative for the battery to the Arduino ground and the other side of the shunt resistor to Arduino analog input 6. In the code, we analog read it many times and then average it to lessen the noise and then after that, basically we just use this formula to convert the analog read to millivolts reading. This here is 1100 millivolts because on the void setup section we will set the analog reference to internal which is 1.1 volts and to make it a little bit accurate i uploaded the code and then measure the irf pin but on this arduino pro mini the irf pin is not is not available but actually the irf will be this ceramic capacitor here so now we change 1100 to the actual value so we uploaded the code again we see now the actual shunt resistor voltage is 27 millivolts and on the arduino it's 24 millivolts on the serial monitor if you ramp it up they are not perfectly the same but i think the values are close enough now to get the current, we just use ohm's law. Basically, because we have one ohm shunt resistor, the voltage you read on it will be directly translated to current. So if it's one volt, it's one amp. 
but in my case I still type the actual resistance. So now we compare it to the actual reading and it's also close enough. But we have another problem. With this internal reference we are limited to about 1000 milliamps of discharge current. So to make it possible, I place a 210k ohm resistor across the shunt resistor as a voltage divider. So the middle of it will be half the voltage of the shunt resistor voltage. In that way we can analog read it but in the formula we just multiply it by 2 or just simply change 1024 to 512 steps of our ADC. So now we know how to measure current. The things we need to do like before is to keep monitoring the current and multiplying it to the time passed. In my case, I'm monitoring it every second. So as the time goes by, the capacity value will be accumulated, as we can see. So now, you know how to get the capacity. But anyway, we also need a voltage divider for reading the actual battery voltage because we know the battery voltage is way over the analog reference. We put in our code to disable the supply of our potentiometer when the battery voltage is too low so that it will also disable the discharging process or else the battery will be permanently damaged or it will explode. So now it's time to add this LCD display and this button and I added some additional code for it to work. And now there you have it. So first insert the battery and then set the minimum voltage you want it to stop discharging. So just click it to increment. Generally 3 volts is a good minimum value. So to select it, just long press and now it starts calculating the capacity. This is the actual voltage of the battery and this is the actual current it discharges. So just adjust the potentiometer to the current you want. And then wait for it. But this battery is not full so let's test a full one. And finally, now we now know the capacity of this rechargeable battery. It's only 722 milliamp hour. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I'd like to hear about your comments on this project. So comment down below. And see you on my next videos.